back to another riveting edition of Under the Floorboards, where we laugh at the creatures that go bump in the night. I am your host, John, joined as always by my beautiful co-host, Eric. How are you this week? I've never been more nervous about anything in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the shades. He's quaking in his boots. <laughs> I'm standing in front of the Guardians of the fucking galaxy, and I don't know. What I'm doing, so. Yeah, man, this is going to be a good one. Yeah, really excited. We have a lot of the cast from The Boy From Below, upcoming feature this year. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. So we're going to start off at least in the uh, direction that I can see on my Zoom chat, but we'll start with the one and only Spooky Madison. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Hello. Joined also today by Leah Voicey. Hello, happy to be here. Kamara Cole. Hello. Mr. Jack Norman himself, the wicked one, and the one and only writer director Tori Jones of Jonestown Films. Welcome, all. That's it. That's it. It's the boy from below now. We can't call him the wicked one anymore. Oh well, the boy from below is now on our show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. the boy. Yeah. And- there- so that's that's actually a great segue into our first question man but first of all thank you thank Perfect. you yeah it really is but like thank you guys first of all for being on our show we're super excited to have all of you we're big fans of honestly each and every one of you individually um especially like i know kamara i pretty much send her pictures every time that i get like <laughs> something signed i'm like look what i just got in the mail <laughs> um but my first question is actually for Tori. Um, I want to know, and we talked about this a little bit uh, mm-hmm. via IG and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there, there's the easy comparison of like, this is like a reimagining, right, mm-hmm. of the Wicked One. We step into this boy from below realm. And there's the comparisons between like Malum, Terrifier, between that and All Hallows Eve and the development of art. What made you want to bring this character specifically and like this story into a new ethos? So I always knew that I wanted to come back to do this and to reintroduce this character with a real budget. Cause when we made that original film, it was made for no money, literally no money. I mean, we slept on the floor. We did whatever we had to do to get that movie made. Um, so to be able to come back and to do this and reintroduce this character now gosh it's been 10 years since that whole thing started so uh when i looked at um what they did with art from the all hallows eve movies to terrifier and like you said malum with uh was it late shift or or final last shift, shift? Mm-hmm. the last shift yeah so that was sort of the same thing and and you see it all the time in 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 hollywood where they reintroduce these these characters with new continuities and it picks up where you know or it's a fresh start or whatever that may be so i think with the last film that we did it became very convoluted and uh it lost its way and i was like i just seemed like that character which was the attraction for the first film was lost in the shuffle in the second film so i wanted to reintroduce it and actually uh, Mike Levy was one of the big proponents of me doing it. Uh, they were producers on the original film. And he actually had said, uh, you know, you need to do this. You need to do it right. You need to do it with a bigger budget. And I, he was one of the ones I went to when I had the idea, him and Andy Palmer, who's another awesome director. And both of those guys basically said the same thing. Like, you can do this, do it right, bigger budget. And uh, so that was really really the uh the genesis of it because i feel like this character has a lot of built-in marketing and and brand of brandability i don't even know if that's a word but branding uh possibilities and and stuff like that so that was really the genesis of it is just uh, wanting to bring it back and do it in a way that does the character justice super sick and jack you actually play the boy in the film so what is it like getting a second crack at a character all these years later <clears throat> um, I kind of felt the same way Tori said when I read the sequel script and stuff. And then, unfortunately, it didn't work out for me to play in the second time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just had had my daughter, which I'm that was saying. seven years ago now that they filmed the second one. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. But Tori called me up, I guess, about a year ago now um, and said he wanted to bring it back. And I was like, man, the only way I'm going to do that is if it's like 
you know, we do it right. I want a little bit of input on what the character looks like and stuff like that. So, and me and him talk at least once a week, if not twice, three times a week, <laughs> uh, maybe more about that stuff. And I've even bought some of the stuff just oh, for shit. the character. So out of my own money, no one, I mean, he, most of it came from them, um, <laughs> but I did buy some of the stuff myself just for the character. And, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. So, uh, I had a lot of feedback from the last movie that I wasn't in. And I'm like, yeah, that wasn't me. Um, <laughs> not that it was bad either. It wasn't, I don't even, I never, I never actually uh, watched it all. So, uh -huh. um, but just people, you know, talk to me. So I'm like, you know what? At least this time I could say it was me. So 100%. And like after, by the way, congratulations guys on a very successful Indiegogo campaign, yeah. by the way, uh, which is still in demand, correct? And I think will be when this is out correct yes yes yeah, so yeah. you guys can still get your dvds and your t-shirts and like all the fun stuff that's going to be coming out the hoodies were a limited amount of time and y'all should have already jumped on that as far as i'm concerned but uh <laughs> that's what i was talking to spooky about i was like i'm just a fucking slut for hoodies <laughs> <laughs> oh i see that hoodie you're wearing right now it's true i see what you're oh, wearing oh look at that would it's you just look at that <laughs> <laughs> i really i order them like three sizes too big though so it's like a blanket What's the hoodie? I do that too. Yeah, that's yeah. my hoodie. What's the hoodie? Oh, shit. Oh, you're gone. <laughs> you just Visible. disappeared. Your invisibility cloak. It's my face, Tori. Yeah. It's so my face. Funny. He's wearing my face. Give me back my face. But, uh, <laughs> Well, uh, one of the other things I wanted to ask, I, I watched uh, the, uh, I don't know if you'd call it an interview, more like a conversation that both uh, Spooky and Lu uh, Leah had on Leah's channel. Yeah. Um, and I'm very interested to know, like, obviously, uh, the whole script, not the whole script, but like the relationship kind of changed. And I know, Spooky, you're a big advocate for bringing more of the LGB LGBT forward things into this film. But I'd really like to know, what y'all's relationship is like at least to the degree that you can talk about it i don't know i don't know <laughs> how much Tor tori's like looking up from one of the boxes at you like... <laughs> i don't know well, what we're allowed to say we're old friends i could say that about let's do it talk about it okay whatever tori um <laughs> just, just do it was that a dare do it was <laughs> that but um yeah i mean quinn and max were friends um i created a pretty extensive headcanon for them myself um that i won't talk about because it's not actually canon but um they were friends for a really long time i want to hear and the then, fan theories uh, yeah but what i'll send it to you with me with my thoughts <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it later yeah we'll, we'll talk later <laughs> um yeah, so Max and Quinn were friends. They were really good friends. And um, unfortunately, you know, a decision were made and and Max wasn't so nice to Quinn. I don't know. Is that how you would say that? Like, are, how much are we saying? <laughs> like, I, I really so. don't I know. mean, I think that's... You should have asked me, apparently. Yeah. Of, like, I, I think... can edit anything out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Um, I mean, I yeah, I think from Quinn's perspective, Max wasn't terribly nice to Quinn. No, no, it's not just Quinn's perspective. Well, You're not, okay. you weren't nice. <laughs> from my perspective, I was protecting my peace. <laughs> okay, well, you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I think that's interesting of us. I, and I think it makes sense, obviously, because we're like living in the heads of our own characters. So I think our interpretation of what sort of tears them apart is going to be different, you know? Yeah. And well, it's about- I, I can just tear you guys apart. What'd you say? <laughs> I said I could tear you guys apart. And, uh, I mean, yeah, we'll right see. Now. We'll see. You can try. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like, I think <laughs> where our relationship picks up in the film is, like, a lot of reconciling of, of, of wrongs that have happened between them. Wrongs that you did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From your perspective. Agree right. to disagree. Can I, can I add something here? Please. So yeah. apparently they're scared to say for some reason. So the reality of this is, is you have two <laughs> characters who were good friends. One left town to protect her peace, as she said, and to not deal with the bullshit that she was having to deal with. anymore. And Quinn has to own some of the blame because she wouldn't leave town Ooh. and leave her mother or her grandmother and the video store 
And you have Max, who's more open about who she is, and Quinn, who's still a bit iffy about being open with herself and with everyone else, even though everyone else is like, this is your reality. She yeah, but can not- I chime in here? No, okay. yeah. I chime in here. Okay, here's here's the reality of it, okay? Max, you left, okay? And anything that I was supposed to be figuring out stopped there because it didn't matter anymore. And yeah. now all my friends, it's however long later, not all my friends are like, she's gone, whatever, you, you need to move on. I'm fucking sad, but I have to be all these different people, right? So all these different people, and I'm fucking tired, and I cannot be who I'm supposed to be, right? Because you're gone. So now what? And now you're back? Fuck that. And then from Max's perspective, I think it's <laughs> like, I feel for you and I fully empathize, oh. but like, I can't hold your hand through all of these big decisions in your life. Oh, and I just crazy. need to be able to do what I can do. Um, yeah, so I mean, like, it's fun <laughs> seeing the turmoil that these two characters <laughs> are going through at the top of this film. And they they both have their own truths. And we have to kind of, like, see where that overlaps and where that they can, like, come to a place of understanding and hopefully love. But, you know, I, you have to see the movie. So it's Kamara's <laughs> fault. It's Kamara's oh. fault. That- so, so Max is a little bit of a gaslighter I'm picking up. I just- I can't just I can't just hold your hand through it. You gotta do it. I have my own shit that I have to deal with. You know what I mean? Like everyone is their own person, and uh, Mm -hmm. and the thing is too, of course, there's a lot of like family dynamics that are hinted at in the film, especially for Max, that are like hinted at but not necessarily explored. So again, that's like to like you know the work that I have to do of like okay, what was Max's family dynamic like? And I have to assume it was really different than Quinn's um, family life. Cause at least we know Quinn has like one supportive person in her family. Whereas like, as far as I know, I don't think Max really does. Like she only had her friends, but when you're young, like that only gets you so far. And sometimes like removing yourself from the place mm-hmm. is what you need to do. So that's what Max did. And she's back just in time for like a crazy murderer to be like running around town. So that's cool. <laughs> I was going to say okay, the fact so that I feel like, go ahead. Here's the deal. This is all Kamara's fault. I was going to say, I'm waiting <laughs> to see back to that. Okay, let's hear that. Okay, let's hear that. Falls into all this. <laughs> Kamara is who arranged this, the reunion. And they're thinking, oh, you, I got, see. you got sad Quinn and you have, I don't even really know, like Max wants to see Quinn again, but I don't think the way that they're reintroduced that she's expecting what happens happens, but it's all Kamara's fault. She arranged it. <laughs> I and did. Wallace's That's true. fault. So, so <laughs> That's where, true. We conspired. So yeah. Kamara, tell me a little bit about your character. Tell me where Becca falls into all of this, other than the whole movie being your fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of weight. Um, so Becca's part of this really fun just friend group that has kind of grown on each other over years and years of just being together and they know each other really well which is why I reached out and tried to bring these two together because I obviously knew both characters and could see the like hurt that uh, Quinn was going through and it was enough for my character to see, but not just myself, but like everyone else in our friend group. So we were all kind of on board on this. Maybe I spearheaded um, this endeavor, but um, like Gran and I were like in the back room, like we got to make this happen. How we got to do this? Um, So yeah, it's, uh, it's just a really great friend group that we've got and there's a lot of love between all of the characters because once we're all together we kind of fall into this groove even though like um max hasn't been there she falls into stride with everyone and like it's almost like no time has passed once the like reconciliation um has happened and we just get back into like what makes our group dynamic so good is that we we just jive we 
we finish each other's sentences. We know what each other's likes, dislikes. We have that common bond of being like huge horror nerds and like, it's great because that's how I am in my own life. So right. <laughs> it's just kind of playing an extension of myself and uh, and getting to play it with people who are also big horror nerds in real life as well. <laughs> so it's very cool. Yeah, I definitely imagined you in my head actually being the person to do all of this. Like I figured you weren't even <laughs> acting. Like you were just trying to pull everybody back together. <laughs> you guys want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> you should see our like um we have a group text and it's like one of my favorite things going right now because it is really putting us into that that friend dynamic mood because we're all obviously friends but we're getting into that like really easy like jabbing at each other and like having fun and being silly and like sending good mornings to each other so it's cool to get to know that we're going to get on set and carry that vibe onto film and like make you want to be a part of this friend group Totally. And I think this is like a question for everybody then with that kind of ethos out there, like, you know, it's silly and you all are having fun and like everybody's on the same page and everybody loves horror and like all, all of this shit. But like, what, how does that translate? Cause I know everybody acts differently, right? Like some people need it like totally silent on set. Some people drop with a hat, you know? And it's like, so what does that makeup look like for you guys with all of these interpersonal relationships? Um, can you can you ask that question again <laughs> yeah totally so so i do that a lot it's my fault i just start fucking talking after a while but i was gonna ask the same thing so like, what questions. did you say <laughs> what, what I am, see like the like what y'all are doing right now like giggling and making fun of me like it how does that <laughs> when you guys get on set and you guys have like this whole thing of like we're all having a good time together all the time. How does that translate to when we're getting into like these horror settings and you need to drop in? Like mm. how, how, how do you get into that mindset? Is it like you have to like prepare yourself a handful, of, uh, like for a half an hour, or is it like you just drop right into it? What's that like when, you know, you're going from being friends with everybody to stabbing each other, which I know Jack's doing most of the stabbing in this. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, we don't know yet because we haven't filmed anything. We don't know what that's going to be like because it could be totally different than what we plan to. But I can speak from experience with Kamara on Wolf Hollow. Um, there was a scene between her character and I. And when I was getting my prosthetics and my makeup done, uh, we didn't see each other until we were shooting. Like it was like almost time to call action. Um, and that was really cool. I think because we're spending so much time together, like in the cast house and with our uh, text message group chat, um, it's going to be really hard to see everyone be hurt. Mm. It's going to be hard. Be that hard. That that was my example of how I've already started my uh, preparing process. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't care about any of these people. <laughs> Responds to everything in the group chat with "fuck you." <laughs> I'm not in the. I'm not in the fucking. Group He's not chat. in the group I love chat. That. He's yeah. not, He's not yeah. in. So, so the friends, not the murderers. The yeah, group man. chat. The group chat. I'm is not called in the group chat. chat. He's... No, no, Tori's not allowed to be in the group chat <laughs> for obvious reasons. I'm in the cast house though, so you guys better watch out. Oh. <laughs> I'm. That's I'm not fine. in the group chat. My group chat is with Jack, and that sums it up right <laughs> that, it really does just sending pictures of blood to each other yeah jack's the only one who speaks to me so <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that i feel like horror does really well and this is kind of geared towards uh tori and jack is i feel like it brings the multi-dimensional slasher somebody who could very easily be a one-dimensional character that serves one purpose into film and do you guys think that that is something that horror does really easily or do you think that that's something that's kind of by design and helped elevate the genre in general i guess maybe from a point of necessity hold on yeah. do you want me to ask that one again too please okay yeah. i i feel like in horror having a multi-dimensional villain is something that has kind of it, it, it's something that horror does really well when you could have a slasher that's one-dimensional 
and kind of just serves this one purpose in a movie. Is there something that's necessary about that to bring something to the screen or is it just super easy to just have, hey, he just kills people. That's what his role is. And you just let him go play. Well, I think it's boring if the... go ahead, Tori. You told me to say it, but go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Give your opinion. Um, I, I think it's boring you get that one dimensional because and I see that a lot in indie films where the character just kills and they're very stiff. And mm -hmm. that, I don't know if that's because of direction or lack of direction, but ask Tori. I didn't ask him for any notes. I just <laughs> sent him. I, I printed out my own script and I read through it twice now. And then I went back and I made, I thought about each part I'm in, even if it wasn't a kill, um, just maybe walking to a room and I put the notes down like, Hey, this is how I should walk. Like uh, for instance, in one scene, I'm walking through a, a building and I thought, well, I kind of remember like when I joined the Marine Corps, after you learn how to march and walk, you just have this like swag walk to you. And I don't mean like gangster swag or anything like that. Just like everybody can tell like, damn, that's a Marine. It's mm -hmm. kind of something like that. I thought in my head, like I should do that because it's going to, because it's intimidating. Um, and then just each kill, I think every kill, but one, because it was just kind of like simple. Um, I put a little notes down from even what I'm thinking in my head to like, I should, uh, you know, look back twice or I should, you know, lift my foot twice or drive in a car this way, look this way, everything. So I think it's very important, even though you guys might not know I'm thinking it, I'm doing it. And no, I, I love that it so much. Out. It's uh, like a true killer. Yeah, love it. And and that was the goal, too, is what, exactly what Jack said is you see a lot of one dimensional stuff where the dude just walks and kills. Mm -hmm. so i tried to add layers to this character why does he do this what is his story uh because if i could sum up this movie in simple terms it would be that you have multiple human stories playing out that collide and quinn and max and their friend groups human story is taking place but then you also have the boy from below who is having his own story and what is his motivations? Why does he do what he does? Why does he go back at this time? What is what is it that brings him back? All of that is in there. And so he is motivated by what mm -hmm. he does. And and also, you know, I, I don't think it's a spoiler to share this. I'll if it is, who's gonna say anything? I'm the I director. Say it's your fucking movie. Yeah. So <laughs> like so in this continuity, which is brand new, it's not connected to anything that came before. Uh the boy from below was the son of a b-movie scream queen ah. and this b-movie scream queen after her career started to dwindle uh it was just her and her son she ended up taking her life now her son was obsessed with horror movies especially his mother's so flash forward all these years later to 1997 and you have uh they're putting on this event through the imagine if you went to graceland and like they were putting on a big elvis event right it's the hometown of the king of rock and roll or whatever. And and they're putting on this event and I don't know, Elvis's son or child shows up and is like, no, this isn't going to happen. So that's really why he comes back. And, and everything is connected, be it the fact that she was a B-movie scream queen, the fact that Quinn works at the video store, the, the fact that they're, they're all these horror nerds. So it all meshes really well. And there is a there's a self-referential vibe to it, but it's not so self-referential that it's scream. Uh, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's not totally meta. Yeah. Like it's not just intentionally making fun of itself the entire time. Right. right. Like I was talking to D Wallace last night and uh, she was like, oh, flex. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. Right. Like, <laughs> like that's it. the most casual shit that he brought up so far. Name dropping ass. <laughs> so she, uh, she had reached out to me about, uh, she said, hey, just so you know, on page 12, it's talking about uh, George Romero and he died in 2017. And I wrote back and said, yes, D, I know this film takes place in 1997. So she immediately starts like dying laughing. She's like, OK, I'm I'm rolling right now. Duh. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> but with that, I was like, you know, I thought about having you working at the video store with a Halloween St. Bernard shirt on. <laughs> Because obviously the Cujo thing, I was like, but I felt like that might be a little bit too much on. The so I was like, mm, I don't know, but she got a kick out of that too. And that's, 
that's uh that's sort of the vibe we're going for is yeah, yeah. It, it knows what it's talking about I, I can tell you this uh there's a line where when asks her grandmother she says what's your favorite scary movie and it's something i heard me say at a convention one time on a on a it was i think it was for rob's halloween and uh they were talking about <laughs> the howling and d said are we talking about the first howling or the porno howling sequels <laughs> so that's in the script wow. when asked d when asked d like hey what's your favorite horror film and she goes the howling but the first one not the porno howling sequels and of course <laughs> deep is the lead in the howling so just little things like that that horror fans will get that you know i think they'll appreciate and obviously the the main audience is going to be they're not going to it's going to go but sure. horror fans i think will pick up on some of that stuff well and speaking of being a horror fan this is a personal question that i have for you tori uh i remember uh when you had posted the Halloween pumpkin on your Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And I was like starting to sweat bullets on the other side. I'm like, Oh man, I can't wait to see what's coming. So like, I gotta ask you, what was it like, uh, like what for, for you coming so far and working so hard in this industry and what was it like getting that call from Tommy Lee Wallace? Um, well, there are a few things that I love more than Halloween. Uh, that is the that is the film and I know everybody says that but no it's I have a unhealthy obsession with Halloween um, and I'm not sure why that is but it just it just is and Jack is the same way so um, it was just I was like all right we have this character who could play this character I would love for it to be someone from Halloween and you know D did Rob's Halloween mm -hmm. but how could we uh, get someone from the original Halloween and uh, things worked out and I got that call. And literally after I got off the phone, I was emotional. Like I was like, I do not even know who the hell I am right now. Mm -hmm. I have Dee Wallace in my film. She was the first person I was like, all right, Dee Wallace. And then to have this uh, someone from Halloween who, in, I mean, who came up with the look, of michael myers like he created that look and played him in some of the key scenes in the original halloween and then directed halloween 3 directed tim curry and stephen king's it uh i mean just so tommy was actually he got a chuckle out of it because he was like well i'm not an actor i'm a director and i was like <laughs> yeah that's great but i want you to act in this scene. <laughs> so uh, he's super excited and he's super, he's a Kentucky guy. You know, he grew up in Kentucky. That's where he met John Carpenter. Uh, and then of course he worked on all of John's work, you know, from assault on precinct 13 to, mm -hmm. um, the fog Halloween. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just, I haven't really had time to sit down and think about it, but I'm sure there'll be that moment on set where I get emotional again. Um, just, the reality that it's happening and I don't take any of it for granted. Like I've told them, I've told uh, Tommy and I've told D like, this is awesome for me because I get to receive your input and get your thoughts on it. And you, and it'd be a collaborative process where I can sit under that learning tree and be like, all right, so what would you do in this situation? And uh, I mean, how many people can do that? How many people can say, I grew up watching these people and I get to sit under the learning tree and ask them their opinion on something while they're working on my movie. Mm. That's just surreal to me. And the same thing with Leah, like terrifier. <laughs> like my child dances to the clown cafe song. <laughs> so like <laughs> yeah. she's the, the, the youngest one. She's the horror. She's the horror nerd. She's into Chucky and she does the Megan dance and all that stuff. <laughs> so, but I mean, before, before, you know, spooky um, said, you should go after Leah from terrifier too. That didn't even click in my head, but we're sitting here, you know, digging terrifier too. And my child's dancing to the clown cafe song. And now the clown cafe girl is in my movie. So it's just, <laughs> it's just things like that, that have continued to like line up that I'm, I'm like, okay, this is like manifesting everything that I want for this film. It has happened so far, literally. So I couldn't ask for, I don't even know, like 
the only thing that could go wrong is if we got on set and we all hated each other and the movie went down the blaze of <laughs> uh, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think this we is we already gonna, like each other, so that's good. <laughs> I think this is gonna be a great, great collaborative process. Yeah, and w- one thing I actually did want to ask about because again, on the collaborative aspect of this, like the indie community has grown so much, and it's really cool to see you be a part of it as well. But obviously, I've seen like Spooky and Kamara together, and I'm glad to see Jack back on this project, you know. And Leah, obviously, I'm a Terrifier two fan. Like, I'm not. I I try not to like just bring up the shit that people have done while they're on the show, but let's be real, it was incredible. But <laughs> but. What is it like in this? Because, like, uh, actually, I guess this is more geared towards Spooky since you were telling Tori, like, hey, you should bring on Leah for this project. Like, what what goes through your head when you're thinking about, like, all of these people that you want to work with? You know, because obviously Kamara's back, which I love, um, and she's been doing so much stuff. But, like, y'all are about to be on Placid Park together, you know, yeah, and a bunch yeah. of other fun shit. Um, so... I actually sent Kamara's information to Tori too, like back during the Wolf Hollow days, um, because I was so impressed with everything that I saw of Kamara. And then when it comes to like uh, Leah, um, I had seen Terrifier two actually really casually. Like I didn't really know that. Like I didn't really get the hype. I'm not gonna lie. And everyone was talking about it, and I was like, "What the fuck is this movie?" And so I put it on because I never saw. <laughs> I never saw uh, Hello's Eve or whatever it's called. And I didn't watch Ho- Terrifier 1. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> and so I like watched it for free. I have like Plex and like literally some one of my friends' brother illegally downloaded it. And I watched oh it. Oh my God. Kick her off the show. <laughs> I love that for you. Let's you wouldn't it. download a uh, car, would download you? Download a movie. <laughs> Listen, I didn't do it. I just, I was just watching the product of it um anyway a party too (laughs) um and so i watched it and i was like oh this is really cool and then um it wasn't even terrifier 2 that made me a fan of leah it was uh the production company that she has with her production partner melissa and yeah yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) um and then it kind of just clicked like one day i was uh drunk (laughs) <laughs> and it just was like oh my god leah um because i didn't want to be straight in this movie i'll be i'll be straight up right now i did not want to be straight in this movie mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the only time no i'm being straight me. is telling you this <laughs> right now um well we i mean Corey and i he had sent me so many people um to like look at these guys at auditions and eventually he had cast someone um and it just wasn't giving. It just was not for me. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I, I had tried to convince Tori to make Quinn gay for a really long time, at least bisexual, canonly, like outwardly, at least have it like a piece of dialogue or something in the script. Um, but then he was just like, let's go full send, make her gay. <laughs> I like the connotation. Yeah. Gay. gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's some pretty gay stuff that happens in this movie, so. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gay. He's real gay. Is that our slogan? <laughs> Boy from below, pretty gay. <laughs> pretty gay. <laughs> Can that just be our nightmare on Elm Street too? <laughs> I want that on a shirt. Yes, it's pretty gay. <laughs> If you put that back up on the Indiegogo, I will buy that too. <laughs> yeah. Limited edition. It's got, to, it's got to be like that line though, and then Colin's face and just fucking rainbow over top. <laughs> <laughs> you can put a knife through it or like at the end of the rainbow or whatever works for you. I'm not the design person here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so with with all of the craziness that's going on with production right now, I know everyone's kind of like all over the place as far as like, I know Leah, you're way out West and I know, uh, Kamara, actually Kamara, are you out East now? I am. Yeah. I was actually, uh, in Vegas up until December. I had lived there for like years and Leah and I never crossed paths, which is, I know ships in the night, ships in the night. Yeah. Um, but now I'm in uh, Boston. Do you want to carpool to Kentucky together? <laughs> yeah. 
course i get to pick the music (laughs) that's fine dude i've been in kitchen i've been in kitchens for 17 years i don't give a shit what people listen to anymore (laughs) oh can i i was gonna say something really quick just to piggyback um on indie film and i was gonna say what's (laughs) so cool about it is it is a very small community in the fact that um we become fans of each other and we get to really see like the genius of how people are on set and their performances, um, like being on Wapalo and watching you and like seeing all of the amazing like emotions that came out of your scenes and, and you kind of just like pick these people up along the way. And I don't know if it's like that for anyone else, but like, I'm, always sending people's names like to to all of my folks that are like doing productions I'm like hey I've worked with this person I can vouch for them like they were bomb on set there were no issues like super respectful knew their lines knew their shit they were on point like and it's stuff I'm not even like attached to but like I think that's the true essence of the like the family of the horror community is like you want to see each other do well whether you're involved with the project or not and so like that's it's just such an incredible feeling to see really talented people and want them to do well and want them to be connected to other projects whether it's something you're on or just like sending them out into the world um to people that you know and that's really like for myself, how I get connected to a lot of projects is because I've worked with someone and they've been kind enough to like put my name in the hat for something else. And, and it's, it's just really cool. Like you pick up some really great um, family along the way. And, and I'm really, I'm really blessed to like have collected a lot of good folks. Hell yeah. Like Pokemon. (laughs) yes gotta catch them all (laughs) we're all just ash going through this world (laughs) our gym battles are really just the indiegogos which a lot again you guys fucking crushed on this one so congratulations and this actually uh i have a question for jack uh you know i know uh tori you were talking about how there was no money in the in the wicked one you know so my question for jack is how excited are you to have a blood budget? <laughs> um, pretty good because on the first movie, um, which Tori, hold on, I want to see Tori's face when I say this. <laughs> we filmed twice. <laughs> um, I remember the FX girl, she would put like these little sprinkles of blood. And when she wasn't looking, I would grab the whole fucking jug and I'd just be like, <sighs> and she would be like, no, whoa, no way. And I'm like, dude, can't even see the little fucking sprinkle, dude. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, one thing that sold me was uh, the very first FX teaser where the guy puts his fingers to the face. And I'm like, oh, all yeah. right, I'm in for sure. Like, let's go. And then I read the rest of the script and all the kills sound pretty fucking great. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be great. This, it's As insane. an actor, this is probably my, I guess, my one of my biggest as one of, I don't want to say main character but I'm one of the main people if not I guess just being the killer it's my biggest budget film doing that not as a crew member I've worked on bigger mm-hmm. ones as a crew but yeah totally like kills and shit like that as a as a killer or role this is my biggest one so I'm very excited hell yeah so, Get stoked on no it. no more hiding hit acting like we're hitting them and then cut to the <laughs> head body or something hashtag no more blood sprinkles Yes. Uh, <laughs> I want a shirt of that up with me, by the way, now that says no more blood sprinkles. I'm telling you. And it's just a red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my next question is actually uh, for Leah. We talked about this a little bit before the episode. Um, you actually are very famously doing a lot of cosplay on YouTube. Very right famous. Now. Yes, I'm extremely famous. Thank you for <laughs> <laughs> name dropping. Um, but uh, one in particular really caught my eye, and it was one that you did of Annie Landhart uh, from Attack on Titan. Yes. 
So the I'm so excited that... for this question, dude. I am so nervous <laughs> I'm for this so... question. I'm, like, I'm glad it's an Attack on Titan question because I could talk about this for hours. <laughs> Was Aaron wrong? Oh, that is. You want me to answer that question? That's not a yes. You're no goddamn question. right. <laughs> that is like a loaded question. Um, was Aaron wrong? I mean, yes, I think Aaron summed it up himself. Um, in his last like scene he has with Armin, where he said, I think he said something like, "I'm an idiot who got too much power," and that's, I mean, that sums it up. He was never supposed to have that much power because he didn't have the wherewithal of like how to manage it properly and he genocided what 70 percent of the world so yeah 80 but who's counting 80 i would say yeah, <laughs> <he> was wrong. <laughs> so, so i won't see you at the jaegerist rally this saturday no no unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> but attack on titan incredible show i think it's perfect i wouldn't change a thing about it and annie's the best character hmm. uh. <laughs> wow <laughs> you think Aaron was wrong next question <laughs> no if she had to mm -hmm. answer if she had to answer it I'll answer yeah. it no absolutely not I don't you thought think he was, was right I 100 thought he was right because because my thing was when he went to the like pseudo UN kind of thing and they were like I'm we so lost right now they were like, <laughs> Hell yeah. that's why this question was like really just for Leah. Just for Leah. <laughs> yeah. they, they were like, well, we got to fucking blow up parody. And he's like, it's just never going to stop. Yeah. And, and if you and my thing is like, if the only thing that you can do to protect your own people is destroy everything that's around you, I think we've all felt that at some point. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's all a bigger um, yeah. conversation of like the cycle of violence, I think. And that was oh, like totally. what the main the, really what the show is about is like he fixed the problem for a century. And then after that, it, it just starts up again. And it's always yeah. like, you know, history is always going to repeat itself. I think it's like a huge commentary on like the world and like the world we live in. And um, yeah, the ending like really bummed me out. Um, it really bummed me out, but in like a way, in a beautiful way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, and this is the last thing I'll say about it because I, I too could t talk Attack on Titan. I don't know if this is an Attack on Titan artwork right here. Like I'm all about oh, it. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. Um, but the the dog and the dude were actually on Aaron's back as Titans. I thought that shit was crazy. The dog. Oh, like the from the very ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I yeah. didn't even know that. I got you. I got little, you. Little little Easter egg. Mm. I missed. I was like, why is there a dog? <laughs> well that answers that question because <laughs> time doesn't exist everything's predetermined we don't make any of our own choices yep. time's a social construct yeah, uh, yeah. Everything, everything's made up and the points don't matter uh, <laughs> s speaking of social constructs and like i don't really just want to harp on the fact that like <laughs> sentences that have never been said in the history of time <laughs> about like how gay we're trying to make this movie but it feels like it <laughs> But it feels like it's important, right? Like, like it re it really is because, like, you know, I've I've heard a lot of commentary on the positive side of things. Like, I know Meat, which is a movie that's coming out that Anthony Dane is in, who's also in this film. Uh, there's so much in this ethos that I don't have any like idea on. So it's like, for me, it's always like, oh, it's a horror movie, everybody dies. Like, and, and there's no like real thought of like oh the gay person died earlier or why would you have this relationship over here so what does it mean i'd really like to hear from uh spooky leah and kamara on this what is it because i know kamara you've played roles like that as well so what what do you think is kind of that driving force right now to really kind of open up into the horror world well i mean horror is inherently queer truly it is um and there's there's been articles written about this for years that I implore you guys to read because they're very interesting. Um, and it, it has a lot to do with the fact that queer people were villainized in television and media since the beginning of time, since the beginning of television and media. Um, and when as horror evolves, uh, Horror is usually the genre that evolves the, the quickest when it comes to um, society's like expectations or like what the norm is. So, and, and horror also is always pushing 
the envelope. And it just makes sense to have diverse characters at the forefront of horror because that's the demographic that's watching horror are diverse people. And that's what I have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, second, I second everything there. Yeah. Fully agree. <laughs> what about you, Kamara? Um, I would say personally, um, it was just something that always made me very sad um, growing up, like as a person of color, watching a lot of movies where you didn't really see yourself in. Um, and I'm sure that goes for everyone. Um, like you just, you never really saw yourself represented as like, wow, I could be this final girl or like, this is like a person that is not just here to fling a bunch of slang and then die in some ridiculous way. Um, like it's a multidimensional character. And I remember the first time I really truly felt like that was when I watched um, Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight mm -hmm. and I saw Jada Pinkett and I was like, holy shit, like, I want to be this woman like look how amazing she is like and she was like there was nothing like her blackness was not at the forefront in a way where it was just like this caricature of who she was it was she was just a badass and it was so cool and I think there's just been this really neat evolution of of characters um that for myself, like I said, watching women of color in horror movies, like you can see just a really, really dynamic um, character on screen that is so much more than just, just face value. And that's really cool. Cause it, like I said, it used to really bother me like when I would audition for things and you'd see all of these audition casting calls. And it was always like, blonde and white blonde and white and I was always like well why like mm -hmm. there's nothing that really reads for this person that says they need to I mean really this whole cast could be a colorblind cast because there's no reason anyone needs to be any color um and there just weren't roles and it's so cool to see a lot of that opening up for um for everyone and I'm really proud to like be a part of this movie because every character is so dynamic and I love watching the relationship between Quinn and Max and and it's so deep and so beautiful and it's just got all of these layers to it like within this horror film so yeah I I'm it's a really great time in horror right now and I just want to see it to continue to evolve and to include more faces and include more faces that don't look like what we're used to seeing on TV. Like we need a lot of diversity because there's a ton of kids and a ton of adults who are watching movies and they're like, man, I've never seen anyone that looked like me on TV. This is rad. Like, so I like, again, I'm very, very happy to be a part of something that I think will resonate with a lot of people in a meaningful way and stick with them for a long time. 100% very well put Kamara no no surprise <laughs> uh, but uh Eric do you have any final questions Kamara how much for the coffee table <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know Kamara has the dopest fucking coffee table ever it's just fucking glass with all of the issues of Tales from the Crypt underneath, and it's incredible. Oh, I'm a huge, I'm a huge horror uh, comic book collector, so I have a lot of old, old, old editions. It's in Vegas right now in a storage unit, so uh, technically you can it. just. So you're telling me there's a chance. There's a chance you could I'll go get it for you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you just go and grab it. Yeah, there's a ton of memorabilia in that storage unit he's <laughs> gonna go liberate it for you yeah. <laughs> you just show up on set what's in that bag 
it's really big. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, the last question that I I do have uh, is actually for Tori, but I would love for anybody else to feel free to chime into this question because mm. everybody is playing these characters. Um, and I I feel like with a lot of slashers and Tori, I've seen all of your movies, so I'm not worried about this for you. But I would like our audience to know. A lot of slashers, I feel like, fall short with, like, if you look at movies like The Rental, The Rental's very good, but when you look at, like, the interpersonal relationships that happen in that film, ultimately nothing feels like it mattered the entire time, and they just get butchered at the end, and that's just the film. So what slashers, I feel like, really kind of weigh on their shoulders a lot is making these relationships, making these characters, making it so, like, when a death happens, it, like, makes you cringe a little bit or like you feel it in the fucking valves of your heart. So like, what do you, what do you think you're bringing to the table with this film for something like that? So that's a great question. And I put a whole lot of pressure on myself with writing this and rewriting it and rewriting it to, I was like, I don't care about the characters yet. I had to get to that point where I cared about the characters and you know, one of the reasons why that I was like, all right, let's let's go with Spooky's uh, recommendation to make this a, a a queer story for our leads is because I've made other movies and I've seen other movies where that may be in there, but it's done from an exploitative point of view. And if you look at horror, you don't see a lot of uh, upfront queer final girls if i'm wrong i will i will be corrected but i for me the the movies i watch especially slasher movies you just don't see a lot of it so i wanted to care about every character and i wanted their dynamics i'll tell you a film that really did great with that was i thought scream six did great with making me care about the characters Mm -hmm. um and also i think the original scream did that where you cared about the characters so Every character has its own personality. Every char- and they all have their own dynamics with each other. Uh, like with Becca, she's she you know she's the brash, brutally honest person of the group. And then you got Big Dan, who says the wrong thing at the wrong time always. I mean, it, mark it down. You say something, mm-hmm. he's going to have some sort of smart ass remark where he says the wrong thing at the wrong time. And then you have. Um, Aaron, who's kind of this airheaded blonde. Um, and then you have Avery, who's the boyfriend to Aaron and who is um, has his own dynamic with her and his own dynamic with other people. And then you have uh, Heather, who's played by Raleigh, who's the she's the rich girl. And she's the, they basically admit to this in the script. Like Becca says, why do we keep her around? And one of them's like, because she pays for everything. So, you know they have those dynamics but literally i tried to make it that when something bad happens that the response is more emotional as opposed to uh shock and and gore um and that's what really like i know i've said i want i compared this to other movies that have those shock elements but really like when something terrible happens to one of these characters or one of these legends, I want the audience to. Yeah. Sorry, that just excited me. Keep talking. <laughs> Not sure what happened, but the uh, there's a cat. Uh, anyway, it's gone. <laughs> but like, for me, like if I grew up watching D. Wallace, when I watched something terrible happen to D. Wallace, all of that built-in emotion of watching her body of work is there. So I'm going to be like, oh, God, like I'm watching, you know, this elderly lady be, you know, killed or whatever. That's going to be there. And when you care about these characters, be it their relationship or um, what's what's the name? Uh, Logan Miller, uh, played by Chaney Morrow. Uh, His character is involved and we've not (laughs) talked a lot about him and not gave a lot away about him. But you will see these things uh, playing out. And uh, so that was my goal. Care about all the characters. No, nobody's there to just be a kill. I mean, there are characters in this that they're there to die, but our main core cast is there uh, for you to care about them. And that's, that's the goal with it. 
Hell yeah. What about anybody else? I forgot yeah. the question. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember the question either. No, it, oh, no, it feels the same. Yeah, it feels like we're like it's this solar system and we're just all like rotating around each other like we're all connected and we're just all rotating and interacting with each other and then interacting like Tori said with our individual like co-conspirators like Big Dan and I are really close friends but I'm also very close friends with everyone else so we're just constantly orbiting around each other and kind of getting pulled in and then pulled away but we're always constantly revolving around each other and staying in each other's atmosphere and i think that's mm -hmm. like a really good way to like think about this cast is we're always we're always in each other's presence and space mm -hmm. well tori you got some fucking bangers to do that i am so excited for this cast i don't, yeah. I don't I, like i and you didn't just get here you know i know you put all the work into it but you have a lot to be proud of in this film man i'm really excited um and hopefully i'll meet y'all in kentucky but we'll see <laughs> I, I will say this this will be the last thing i say is that um as we get closer and i'm i'm getting through all the pre-production craziness i am so excited next week uh to be on set and make this movie because i feel like and I've told people this, uh, this is the one, this is the film uh, for me. And I just feel it. It's just one of the, I just know this is it. Um, whether other people believe that or not, I really, it's, mm -hmm. it's the one I'm telling you. This is you, the one. you can curse on here. It's fine. Yeah. Well, God's not watching us. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That was really funny. <laughs> He's like this somewhere. Oh, can't look. Oh, okay, well, that looking. was fun. Um, so. <laughs> uh, but on a serious note, thank you guys so much for being on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you guys have to say for your to say to all your fans out there? Spooky, we'll start with you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Great words. <laughs> Thank there's you. some there's some fan of spooky <laughs> other that's like oh yes oh, me. <laughs> that was for me that was for me I do have a I do have a couple um really really supportive people um mm -hmm. and I it would be too much to name all of them and then accidentally forget one and feel bad about it so honestly like that it's really cool because I didn't know that people were a fan of me like it's just I don't know it's just such a weird concept it doesn't really it's not really on my radar yet I think. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Leah, what about yourself? What do you have to say to your fans out there? Yeah, I'm just like excited that a lot of other people are excited about this and believe in the project in the way that we do. I, I don't think that this movie is just like a show up and get your get paid sort of thing. I think like we all have a lot of investment in this, like beyond that, beyond it, like being a job. Um, I think that, yeah, we're all really invested in how this film does and the future of it and all of that. And it's cool to see uh, fans being that excited as well. Hell yeah. Kamara, what about yourself? Uh, I'm just thankful that people love horror and I, I kind of uh, pinch myself every day um, to be able to get up and do something that I love because I know there's a lot of people that aren't able to do that. So, um, so it's very cool. So thank you for anyone who is watching and who's excited about the boy from blow. Cause he should be, it's going to be amazing. And, um, just keep supporting indie horror and support your friends in indie horror. Even if that's just a text being like, I see you, I see you working. I see you grinding, um, because it means a lot. And, and I'm thankful for my horror family. So thanks. And what about you, Slash Jack? <clears throat> well, Spooky said hello, so I'll say goodbye. I knew um, I knew that was fucking coming. I knew he was going to say Damn, I knew I should have gone to Tory first. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> God damn uh, it. No, uh, just thank you to everyone who uh, shared, donated, and um, some of those people are private too. Um, so wow. thank you. Um, 
And all, I mean, I don't, I don't, I kind of had a hiatus on being in front of the screen for a while, but I still have people from when I used to do it more. So thank you to those guys because I know they donated um, and I talk to them all the time. Um, but hopefully uh, we can just fulfill uh, their, uh, I guess, ex expectations. And uh, bye. <laughs> Hell yeah. What about you, Tori? Uh, what was the question? What do, you have to, <laughs> what do you have to say to your fans? Oh God, I don't even know if I have fans. Uh, well, you're sitting in front of two, so yeah. I would just right. say, like I said, I feel like this film. Uh, I've done a lot of movies, and none could compare to what we're about to do. So, um, support <laughs> it, support it if you can. Be a part of it. We got a few weeks left before our Indigo goes done completely. And uh, we are going to stream. I will say this. Uh, I don't know how many people have read the the status, but we are going to stream on the last night of the of the Indiegogo from set with all these people that are here. Wow. We're going to stream live Fear Factor. And when you donate, let's go. Let's go. These people. What? I am so people, excited. Made spooky. Eat shit. Probably like spooky. She's a, she's a vegetarian. Ooh, I'm, not eat I'm not eating meat. I'm not eating meat. I'm not eating meat. This is a gay movie, Tori. I'm not <laughs> eating meat. All right. So casting call release tomorrow for the two leads. <laughs> uh, keep an eye out for that. That's, I, that's how I'll end it. I can play a lesbian. <laughs> I can't act though. That's the problem. But no, uh, just thank you is what I would say. Thank you all for the support, those that you see on Indiegogo and that, those that you don't see in private investment. So thank you all uh, because you all helped make this. And uh, now the fun begins. Chapter one. Here we go. <laughs> Hell yeah, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank make sure you. we're following all of our Instagram handles that you can see in the screen below and make sure that we are checking out this amazing project. Let's give it up one more time for Boy From Below. Let's fucking go. Let's go. I'm so excited for this project. And thank, you, and thank you all once again for joining us. We're at Creaks, It Cracks, and we laugh at the creatures that go bump in the night. <laughs>